Wi-Fi and the internet in general are one of the most important utilities after water, gas and electricity, especially in recent times when people are working from home or just remotely. Poor security on a Wi-Fi network is very much like leaving your front door open, allowing an attacker to exploit that vulnerability. Once an attacker has gained access to the Wi-Fi network, they can launch a whole host of attacks, the main one being becoming a man in the middle and being able to see sensitive information move across the network in plain text. A Wi-Fi network not utilizing any password strength standards is liable to an attack. Using passwords such as a memorable location or your pet's name with a number just after it is a bad idea. Here's why. Connected to my laptop is a wireless network adapter. This allows me to switch between monitor mode and manage mode. Manage mode is what a wireless interface card uses to send packets of data to a specific destination based on its MAC address. This is usually the wireless router or the wireless access point that the device is authenticated to. Monitor mode, however, recons a wireless network, allowing the wireless interface card to listen for MAC address packets that communicate to a wireless station without the network interface card being authenticated to that particular network. The MAC address is a hardware address or a unique identifier of a device that connects to some sort of network. Once I establish which wireless network I wish to attack, I then begin to listen to MAC address packets and begin the process of capturing the WPA handshake. So what is the WPA handshake or the four-way handshake? Put simply, the four-way handshake is the process to authenticate a wireless client such as a smartphone or a laptop and encrypt any communication between that client and the wireless access point. Extensible authentication protocol over LAN frames are exchanged between the wireless host and the authenticator running on the access point, thus creating a secure connection between the two points. This is the process we want to capture. First thing I need to do is set my network adapter from manage mode to monitor mode to begin the process of capturing the MAC address packets going across the wireless network. The first thing I need to do is M on NG, check kill, M on NG, start, LAN zero. So to check that my network adapter is in fact in monitor mode, see there, mode, monitor. Now to begin scanning for the wireless networks around me, I'll be using aero dump NG, and then specify my network adapter LAN zero. So I've now stop the scan, I can see a lot of the wireless networks around me. The network I am particularly interested in is the Paddington network here. So from here, I can see the hardware address of the access point, what channel the wireless is broadcasting on. The encryption is WPA2 and authentication of a pre-shared key. I now need to begin the process to capture the MAC address packets from a host device on that wireless network. So I'll split my terminal horizontally and I'll use aero dump NG, specify the wireless channel, channel 11, and now I need to write the handshake capture to a file that can be read later on with my word list. So I'll call it Paddington Capture. And now I specify the target MAC address and then my network interface card LAN0. So it's now found a wireless host sending MAC address packets to the authenticator or the wireless access point. What I need to do now is deauthenticate the user on the right hand side here from the wireless station it's authenticated to. To do that, I'll be doing a deauthentication attack. A deauthentication attack is a type of denial of service which will deauthenticate a wireless host from the wireless network. When it tries to re establish a connection back to that wireless access point, my machine will now be ready to capture the four way handshake. Now, to begin the deauthentication attack, I'll be using AirPlay NG. Deauth0. Deauth0 is an infinite amount of deauthentication packets to be sent until I decide to stop it. The access point MAC address and then the wireless client's MAC address. And lastly, specify my network adapter LAN0. So it's now deauthenticating that user from the wireless network. When it attempts to reauthenticate, it will then capture the WPA handshake. So I can see from here, the WPA handshake's now been captured. I can stop both my attacks and highlight up here WPA handshake. So I clear both my screens now. To crack the WPA password, I'll be doing what's called a dictionary attack. A dictionary attack uses a word list which contains thousands and thousands of known common phrases and passwords. It will then cross-reference this word list to the handshake capture file that we've created to crack that password and show me it in plain text. So to begin this process, I'll be using aircrack ng. Specify the capture file, patterns and capture. And then specify the word list I wish to use.
So this Rock UTXT file contains thousands and thousands of known passwords and phrases from previous successful password cracking attempts. To show you the extent of this password list, I need to change directories. So when I press enter and begin the process to crack the password, it will show me it in plain text. So see here, key found, buster123. Now to show that buster123 is in fact the Wi-Fi password, I need to reset my network adapter back to manage mode. Now the wireless networks around me have populated in this grid here, consider wireless network Paddington. I show the password in plain text, use buster123. I'll now generate a ping to the Wi-Fi router and I'm getting a response, which means I'm authenticated to the wireless network and in communication with the router. There's many other ways to crack a four-way handshake and crack the WPA password. I'm going to show you one more now called Wi-Fi. So you see here the network Paddington has shown up again. You see it's using WPA PSK and there's one client on that wireless network. So if I select option number three, and now it goes through the different attacks that Wi-Fi has to offer. The one I'm looking for is the WPA handshake attack. So it's now discovered a new client on that wireless network. It's now the authenticator in that client. And once it reconnects to that wireless network, it will capture the handshake. So you see here it's captured the handshake, saved it automatically to a file capture and begins cracking the password straight away. See here, current key, buster123. This is the reason why ISPs such as BT and Sky use complex passwords on their Wi-Fi routers to stop an attack exactly like this, the dictionary attack. It's unlikely that any sort of word list will contain the password that's on the back of one of these routers. Also, generating a random complex password utilizing uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, special characters, having it over 10 characters long adds that extra layer of protection against a word list attack. Brute Force uses computer graphics processing power to crack a password by trying millions and millions of password combinations until a match is found. However, this can take a very long time as utilities such as Hashcat uses the computer's graphics processing power to crack these passwords. If the computer's graphics processing card isn't powerful enough, it can take weeks, days, even years to crack a complex password. Another brute force and utility is John the Ripper. Again, it can take an extremely long time to brute force a complex password. To protect against a dictionary attack or a brute force attack, it's best to generate a random password. The service I use is KeyPass. KeyPass is a free open source utility which allows the end user to store all their passwords in an encrypted form on a database that's offline. KeyPass also has a password generator within it. So to get to the password generator, I go to generate password. I can see from here, I can do the length of generated passwords. So I can do 12 characters. So uppercase, lowercase, digits, or special characters. Go to the preview tab. And here it's generated a whole host of random passwords. Other ways to protect your wireless network is to disable services such as WPS. WPS or Wi-Fi Protected Setup is a push button authentication method which allows a user's device to authenticate to the wireless network without having to physically put a password in. WPS uses an eight digit pin which can be brute forced relatively easily. Finally, if you can hardwire as many devices as you can using Cat5e, Cat6, Cat6a and turn the Wi-Fi off on them devices, it won't give the attacker a chance to recon the network and sniff for any MAC address packets. So thank you for watching this video. This video was made to help people understand the importance of Wi-Fi security. Wi-Fi is the gateway to your local area network and having a poor security configuration is like leaving your front door open, allowing an opportunist or a chancer to exploit that vulnerability. So make sure you take the necessary steps to make sure your Wi-Fi network is protected.